Hello, Tinterweb and Facetube. It's Joshua Dalal, designer blacksmith, and for another episode of Why Side Blast Forges Are the Best. In my opinion. Don't hold me to it. There have been some questions. Hang on. So first of all, I need to get some facts right that I didn't get right in the last video. It's a chew iron, not a flu. So when I talk about flu part, I actually meant a two iron which is the water-cooled part that delivers the air in. And it's also the process of turning coal into coke. You get town gas, not natural gas, which I got that wrong, I said it wrong, but sometimes I do say things wrong. And I'm relying on you guys to correct me. And Google. <coughs> so we have Lubet. Why is water cooling so important? Let's have a look at that now. Got a tank at the back filled with water. Now there's a pipe, if I come around the other side, with air, here's my air pipe coming in, into this temporary pipe that I put in about five years ago, you know how it is. It goes into the back, and it goes through this tank, through the water called chew iron, into the forge, allowing lots of oxygen in and it not to melt away. So if I go back to my hood, this is the tank of water here, this is the chew iron, there's a pipe coming all the way through, this is filled with water, so all of this, as the water heats up here, it rises, all the cool water drops and fills its space. Oxygen is coming in here, feeding our fire and not melting away, as I will show you. So to answer the question properly of why um, water cooling is so important, I came up with this um, experiment. I basically have rigged a uh, stainless steel pipe straight onto the blower and pushed it into the forge. Now I did actually create a special nozzle uh, that was trying to replicate a refrigeration um, effect uh, by causing turbulence inside the nozzle and um, helping to keep it cool and not to melt away. And to an extent it worked actually. Um, I could bring things to a fire welding temperature and this would, wouldn't have uh, melted away at all. It would stay intact. Although I do push the limits of its capabilities and it does eventually melt away. So in principle it does work and there are such things as dry chew irons um, that are air cooled, uh, normally cast uh, cast iron. Um, but really uh, even, even if it was air cooled it would still get corroded quite a lot because it's still getting extremely hot and I, I fully recommend a um, a water cooled chew iron instead. <clears throat> okay, so now we have from Stephen P in the BC Will it work with coal? Yes, it will, and I'll do another video on that um, later on. I'll use coal, different types of coal, um, charcoal, coke, and show you all the differences on the steel and how it works, especially in fire welding, because I think that's. That's the main thing, getting a good fire. Sorry, like getting the temperature for normal forging, although, you know, in some fires you'll get a heavier scale and all this kind of stuff. But um, uh, using, using all those fuels on the um, side blast is absolutely fine also. But you might have to change your method because um, fuels work kind of quite differently to, to each other. Now we've got Dean Parvin, legend. What metal would I recommend to build a forge with? So I've built this and my demo and my other new forges that I'm building uh, out of three mil plates. Now you probably could get away with two mil, if, if, if I'm honest, uh, to make it lightweight. I just made it out of three just to make it really robust. You, you know, if, if all you can get hold of is two, then you can make it out of two mil. Uh, but the actual chew iron itself, that normal steel one, is uh, eight mil thick plate, and so is my uh, demo forge one. Is eight mil thick plate as well. 
but stay tuned because I have a little invention that I've made out of what's well, a uh, thinner wall thickness, but it's stainless steel and uh, very simple to build. It's probably the most simplest thing you can use to build a forge with. And I've actually converted a barbecue into a forge, and so there's a video on that later. That um, stick around, subscribe, and you'll see it. <clears throat> Mr. RTX, no, Mr. RTX, Mr. TX Wolfie. Can you just use fire bricks with a hole? You can. You can just use fire bricks with a hole, but there's a problem. Because that hole, the chew iron, isn't cooling, all of the silica and the slag will just want to stick to it. So what you'll find is you can't just simply remove the clinker. You'll have to chisel it off and break it off. And also, I've had problems with fire bricks, even though they are fire bricks. If you get one part of it really, really hot compared to the other parts, they still tend to crack and all this kind of stuff because of expansion. So they're not ideal. And you can try it, it'll work for the day probably, but uh, if you want something that lasts really long, a water called chew iron is not what I recommend, it's the best anyway. So there's been a num number of people who have been uh, interested in how the gravity fed water cooling system works on my demo forge. So let's take a, look, a little look at that. So here's my demo forge again. <coughs> so I mentioned in the previous video you've got your hot water out and your cold water in and it's gravity fed and a lot of you are kind of like, what? What do you mean? So the idea is this tank would be lifted up slightly higher than this, look about there. Um, so the pipes are all going up towards the tank so you're not getting any air locks. Uh, so if there's, let's do a little, oh look, another place to draw on. So uh, say uh, that's going into my forge and this is my tank. If, if the uh, pipe does that then you'll get these little air locks which means the water can't flow back back through. So you want to keep everything high like this so all the bubbles can rise to the top of the tank and you're not getting an airlock and it doesn't get blocked. So that's the reason behind that. So you'd have this tank up, up like that, and let's lift this off. So as this heats up, the um, hot water rises to the top. This is butted to the end of this so, and welded on. So all the water goes then through here. Heat rises, goes all the way to the top of the tank. The cold water is heavier, so the cold water drops down. And it still always has to be higher than these, so you don't get an air lock. It will drop down and come back in. And the water pipe, the cold water pipe itself, comes actually all the way and then just stops at the end here. So there's, it's directed all that cold water straight to the face of the chew iron. Now there was a comment to say, uh, what, what, do you mean about a, uh, what do you mean about a shelf you were making? Well, this lid that I haven't fixed on yet. basically going to be bracketed on, so I've just got some little brackets that I'll screw on, put on that. Now this part will be on to create like a stopper and make it kind of more rigid. So this will eventually flip out there and I've got like a nice little tray for putting all my tools and stuff on whilst I'm working. So that's that. Uh, so I haven't made them yet, but I'll be filming the makings of my new, brand new forges that I've designed uh, for doing teaching. So uh, if you want to come to the, the workshop and uh, learn a bit, I'll, uh, I'll be advertising that soon. But uh, I've also done another video of um, my new barbecue forge, which is ideal for the season. Lovely barbecuing weather I see now. And also you can forge some bottle openers and toasting forks and other little knickknacks that we all love to make as blacksmiths. So stick around for that in the next episodes.
So let's get time to appreciate the super chew iron before I install it and therefore you won't be able to see all the, the workings anymore. You can see down there, that is the air pipe going all the way through. And then these pipes go in and completely coat around that end like a water jacket. Hopefully I would have created a load of dimensions and possibly making these to sell. So you'll see a link round about now. Maybe an ebook or um, with dimensions or DXF files for the cut list or uh, engineering drawings or even the final piece. So you can actually build a very simple cheap forge yourself but have it professional quality. There we are, take care and happy forging a life worth living. See you next time.